Good morning and welcome to the uh, planning hearing officer hearing for May 24th, 2017. Uh, my name is Roger Kiesel and I will be serving as planning hearing officer today. We have two cases and relevant exhibits are posted on the panels located directly behind me. The agenda staff reports and recommendations for each of today's cases can be found on the city's website. A copy of the hearing procedures are available at the counter by the front door next to the agendas and copies of the report. As I mentioned earlier, we have two cases today. Both are uh, conditional use permits. The first one is located at 125 West uh, Las Feliz Road. It's a conditional use permit um, to allow the continued operation of a massage use. The second uh, Conditional use permit is a conditional use to establish a uh, 5,000 square foot uh, gym uh, anytime fitness. So under the provisions of Title 30, Chapter 30.42 of the Glendale Municipal Code, a conditional use permit shall be granted if four required findings are present. And those findings are, are in the zoning code and um, staff will go over the findings as well as the applicants. Uh, findings. If the, fi if the evidence presented in the application and at the hearing meets the criteria, then the planning hearing officer can either approve or impose conditions for approval on the case in question. If the findings of fact are not evident, then the request will be denied. Um, public notice. Notification of this hearing was accomplished by the use of public notices which were mailed to property owners and occupants located within 500 feet of the subject property, uh, physically posted on the site in question, placed in the local, local newspaper, and also posted on the city's website. Uh, the hearing will proceed as follows. I'll read uh, the description of the requested entitlements. Uh, second, the case planner will make a brief overview of the case, giving analysis and making, uh, making a recommendation. The applicant will be asked to come forward stating both name and address and will be asked to, to present the case within a 15 minute time limit. Others in support of or in opposition to the, uh, the application and interested parties will be asked to come forward and speak stating both name and address within a three minute time period. Then finally, the applicant will be given the opportunity to make closing comments uh, and respond to testimony given uh, by the preceding speaker for five minutes. The hearing will then be closed and the case uh, taken under submission. Uh, decision. After the hearing, the decision will be prepared in writing and will be in the form of a letter sent to the applicant and to all persons who responded to the public notice either by speaking at the hearing or by submitting uh, written responses and uh, have, have provided their name and address. Uh, the date of the decision uh, will be the date appearing on the letter. However, if a decision is made at the hearing, the decision date will be uh, today's date and the 15-day appeal period uh, will start today. Appeals. Under the appeal provisions of Title 30, Chapter 3062 of the Glendale Municipal Code, the decision may be appealed to the Planning Commission within 15 days of the date of the decision. Anyone wishing to appeal may obtain the forms and brochures on the procedures from the Permit Services Center located in room 101 of this building. Okay, I've got four speakers for both cases. Uh, does anybody else want to speak on either of the cases at this point? No? All right. So let's start with the first uh, conditional use permit. Uh, again, the location is uh, 125 West 125 West Las Velas. It's classic uh, family spa. It's conditional use permit number 1703663. Uh, the applicant is Alicia Yen uh, Lai. And uh, the applicant, the application is for a conditional use permit to allow the continued operation of a massage use located at 125 West Las Velas Road in a C3 commercial services zone, Height District 1. Um, 
Yep, that's it. Uh, right. Uh, why don't I go through? Actually, why doesn't the staff person, um, Milka Toledo, give a brief explanation? I will then go through the um, the comments, and then we can get the um, the speaker up. Thank you, Mr. Key. So as you stated, this project is located at 125 West Los Feliz Road. It is a CUP for renewal purpose, or in this case, there's an existing massage establishment there. Um, and they are now under the new requirements, are applying for a conditional use permit to continue the operation of the current massage operations at Classic Family Spa. Staff is recommending denial of this project and or this request, and I will go through it briefly in the findings, which are delineated in your staff report in more detail. The existing massage establishment is 4,500 square feet. It's, it's located on the northwest corner of Los Feliz Road and Orange Street. The lot is approximately 8825 square feet, and it currently has a two-story commercial building with nine uncovered parking spaces, and Classic Family Spa is one of the two commercial tenants there. There is also residential uses located at the rear of the same site. And it's, lo again, located, oriented towards Orange Street, and then there's also residential beyond to the north. The surrounding uses include both commercial and, again, the residential, and there's also public uses, which includes the Glendale Memorial Hospital located across the, street, across the street to the south, and there's also a nursing home there as well. We did receive comments from the Police Department and Neighborhood Services Division, which uh, they've stated they, they do have concerns regarding the request to continue the operation of the existing massage establishment there. The Police Department recommends that the planning hearing officer deny the applicant's CUP request to allow the continued use of the massage due to direct violation of the Glendale Municipal Code, specifically sections 5.64040 and 050. I'm not going to go through the, um, the background as to why we review massage establishments today. We've been doing this now for a while, so if there's any questions, it is all spelled out in the staff report. What I'd like to do now is go straight to the findings, just briefly highlight some of the items as to why we are recommending denial, or in this case, staff is recommending that these findings cannot be made in a positive manner. So A, the proposed use will be consistent with the various elements and objectives of the general plan. Well, while the massage establishment is located in the C3 zone, which does allow this type of use, it is consistent with the various elements. Documentation received from the Gl Glenda Police Department and the city's Neighborhood Services Division indicates that Classic Family Spa has operated, again, in direct violation of the Glenda Municipal Code, specifically, again, chap sections 5.64050, which is inconsistent and in violation of the Glenda Municipal Code, the Zoning Code, and the land use element of the general plan that governs governs massage uses. And again, any f violations of any statutes, ordinances, laws, or regulations are grounds for revocation of an existing or denial of a new entitlement, as is the case of the subject conditional use permit to continue operating at this location. In terms of the use and its associated structures and facilities and why it will uh, be detrimental to the public health safety and the general welfare or the environment. Again, going back to comments received by the Glendale Police Department and their records and also Neighborhood Services Division, um, being the fact that they are in violation due to different incidents that have taken place, uh, this use would be detrimental to the public health safety and the general welfare of the environment. Uh, within the last calendar year, there were two calls for police service at this location. And again, the nature of the calls were, one of them actually were due to the fact that the masseuses did not possess CAMTC certification, in addition to the incidents that resulted in, in police reports being taken. In regards to the use and facilities and how it will be adversely 
can affect or conflict with adjacent uses or impede the normal development of the surrounding property. Again, due to the fact that they have not been consistent with the requirements of the Glendon Municipal Code in violation of Chapter 5, uh, not having the CAMTC certification requirements for all their masseuses, this again is uh, indirectly in conflict and could with the zoning code and will impede the normal development and of the activities of the normal development of the surrounding property. And lastly, adequate public and private facilities such as utilities and parking spaces and how they're provided for the use. They are currently there. This, attic, this, this is a public and private facilities and utilities are currently in place. This is a developed property. And again, the, the massage use has been operating in its current location since 2015. There are nine parking spaces at the rear. So that particular finding can be made, but as far as the remaining three, staff could not um, make positive findings uh, as a result of the incidents that have taken place and the fact that some of the masseuses did not have these requirements, the CAMTC certifications. Okay. With that, I will conclude my remarks, and we do have a member of the police department here in Neighborhood Services Division, which I can defer to so they can go into more detail as to what is taking place. All right, why don't I first uh, just briefly go over the comments that we got from other departments regarding the case. Uh, police department. Um, I, I'm not going to read the whole, their whole comments. Um, but it appears there were um, a couple allegations of uh, inappropriate touching going on that they've looked into. Um, as Milka mentioned, um, some of the uh, masseuse, masseuses um, did not possess the, the, the uh, proper certification for um, being allowed to um, give massages. Um, and those were the concerns of the police department. Neighbor, city attorney, um, city attorney, um, the applicant shall fully comply with and shall not violate the massages, uh, the, the provisions of the Glendo Municipal Code for massage establishments. Um, full access to the present to the premises must be made available to City of Glendale representatives, uh, and then failure to abide by or fully comply with any and all conditions um, is grounds for CP revocation. That's from the city city attorney's office. Uh, neighborhood services. Um, neighborhood services um, has uh, visited the site. Um, they didn't observe any violations. However, um, However, uh, they were unable to verify some of the um, masseuses and their certifications. So similar comment to the police department. <clears throat> um, from just standard comments from GWP Water. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. And um, and that was it. I've got one question um, before I have the applicants come up. Um, you mentioned that there were residences. These are the residences here, and this is? Yes. Okay. Yes. Where did the residences park? The, behind the that building in the rear, which is... The residence, there's like, I believe it's a duplex. Behind it, 
towards the west is another building and that's their garage oh okay all right good okay thank you um, who would like to go first let's see actually um, I don't have any green card from the applicant So can I uh, explain to her because uh, you know you already announces a lot that she probably doesn't understand. That's fine. Can I speak to her? Now? Yeah, you can speak and then do a green card after, but you need to come and talk into the mic. Okay. And actually, if um, how do you, is it Miss Lai? Yeah. Miss Lai, if both of you could come up, that would be great. Okay. So right now, yep, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, I'm uh, just uh, she hires an interpreter today because uh, I just read uh, this whole thing right now. Okay. Now this room, ah, this this room, there are many things that are not legal. Then, generally, ah, you this, the atmos is completely not legal. There are also parking spaces that are not legal. There are also many conditions that are not legal. Okay. So, you know, 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 so you mean everyone has yes, a, yes, a everyone so every masseuse they have a certificate of a massage the license. Okay, um, hold on. Why don't you just um, what your job now is to, is to present is to present your case is to present the findings. There are four findings that you need to make for a conditional use permit, um, and as as you've um, as you've heard, um, planning staff is recommending denial. Of your conditional use permit. Okay. So what you need to do is um, make the four findings in the affirmative, in, in sort of in the, in the opposite way that our staff did, and convince me that your conditional use permit uh, has some merit, so that I can approve it. But let's. Why don't you start with the findings first, and then if I have questions, then I can ask you. Oh, okay. Uh, the beginning, because uh, she hires me today this morning, I have no idea. I just come over here and just, just read it, and then, oh, just got to see it. There's a violation of the police department, so I have no chance, because when you announce, I'm sitting over there. I don't have a chance to uh, translate to her. So, I was just going to say, because when we came here, when we came here, we didn't have a chance to talk to him. So, when he came here, he said, you know, the situation is, is that you have to think about what you have to find out, what you have to talk to him, what you have to talk to him. Because this is a chance to talk to him. Okay? Yeah. So, when you come here, you have to say, because I didn't have a chance to talk to him, because I didn't have a chance to talk to him. Okay? Because that is the planning department, the planning department. So, if the planning department is the planning department, if you have a plan, you can tell the planning department what is not the planning department. If you have a plan, you can tell them. If you have a plan, you can tell them. Because there is also a chance to talk to the lawyer, the landlord, the landlord, the landlord, the landlord, the landlord, the landlord, the landlord. So, there are many parts. Okay? Oh, there are many parts. Okay? Oh, there are many parts. Okay? 没有，他刚刚在在在整整个 announce 里面的话，全部都有提到，有很多的事情。Okay, 呃，太多了。OK， 他他都讲了很多问题，所以。呃、uh, ，I'm I'm sorry because、uh, at the meeting, in the beginning of the meeting, you know, the, she doesn't have a chance to listen to what、uh, what you're talking about. She doesn't understand. All right. So uh, so. So can we like go through like、um, planning department first, and then if you can、uh, step by step, then I'm going to translate to let she. Well,、um, we, Miss Toledo is the planning department. He said that is. She's your. She's the one you've been working with on this. He said you. Yeah, you. With her, you've done this. So it's like this. Okay.、Um, and so what we need from you is.、Um, You making the findings in in a yes manner. Why why this、uh, massage establishment won't be detrimental? Okay. Why you know the four findings that Milka went over. Okay. Hi.、Um, you know I'm wondering whether、um, what we can do is maybe put you on hold for a few minutes. I've got another con conditional use permit.、Um, maybe. 
put them first so okay. that you can sort of organize your thoughts? Sure. Does that? That's better. Yeah. Because, <laughs> 他让他们先做，因为他们可能简单一点。因为你这个问题根本就很多，原来的问题都不知道，所以我觉得我同意他这样。Yeah, so we're gonna stay. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is continue this public hearing. Okay. Um, until uh, okay. we and, and move on to the next one. Sure. Yeah. So, so we stay outside. And wait. Well, you can do. Uh, you may be able to go to the next room if no one's using it, and you can talk. Okay. Got it. Okay. You okay? Yeah. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, now what I'm going to do is um, start the second hearing. Okay, so um, the next item on the, on the agenda is... Uh, conditional use permit 1703425. Uh, it's located at, at 300 East Colorado Street. Uh, it's Anytime Fitness. The applicant is uh, Alex Wu uh, with uh, uh, Genesis Consulting Inc. Incorporated. The applicant or uh, the application is a conditional use permit to establish a new 4,988 square foot gym on a 16,460 square foot lot located at 300 East Colorado Street in the DSP slash EB downtown specific plan East Broadway district. Um, and why don't I, that it's just a brief introduction. Um, why don't I turn it over to Mr. Joe to give me a intro. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kiesel. Um, once again, this is a proposal for a conditional use permit to establish a new gym, Anytime Fitness. Um, quickly, just to go over what you kind of just uh, briefly outlined, it's a site approximately 16,000 square feet. It's on the southeast corner of uh, East Colorado and South Louis Street. Uh, it's developed with a single tenant, one story uh, commercial building previously occupied by a retail establishment, um, Payless Shoe Store. And it's slightly under 5,000 square feet. Um, on site, there, it's improved, or actually it consists of 24 um, surface parking spaces. Uh, the general plan and the zoning for the property is the same, which is the downtown specific plan, East Broadway District. Um, surrounding the property um, are the same zones, which is the downtown specific plan, East Broadway to the north, east, west, and um, they're all developed with uh, commercial sites, um, with the exception um, south of the property, which is uh, an R1650 zone, which is multifamily residential. Uh, this application was submitted or routed to other various departments within the city. Uh, no major comments were received. Um, going into the findings for this conditional use permit, um, I'm going to break into the first one, which is consistency with the general plan. Um, the site is, once again, East Broadway District, which encourages uh, a moderate density mixed-use development, which is generally um, residential up above and then uh, ground floor retail establishments on the, on the, on the ground level. Um, uh, the site is, is between the central Glendale redevelopment area and the Civic Center, which is composed of a variety of commercial, uh, commercial uses, multifamily residential uses, civic uses, open space, and cultural, cultural uses. So staff believes Anytime Fitness would complement it within this East Broadway district and kind of the composition uh, that's between the uh, uh, Central Glendale Redevelopment Area and the Civic Center. Um, and since the applicant is just proposing a new gym, uh, no other uh, elements would need to be, uh, would be affected, such as open space or recreation or housing. Um, last, the, the general plan is the circulation element identifies uh, the East Broad, I'm sorry, the East uh, Colorado Street as an arterial street, which is mainly designed to handle heavier traffic. So staff doesn't believe a traffic impact would be anticipated from this proposal. Um, the proposed gym will not be detrimental to the public. Um, the gym will occupy an existing building, no expansion of floor area, uh, no modifications to the exterior building are proposed. Um, the gym will operate 24 hours a day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week on a membership basis. 
Um, however, staffing will be from uh, staffing hours will be from uh, 10 a.m. to 6 6:30 p.m. Monday through Saturday, uh, 11 a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. on Sundays, um, and during the non-staff hours, there will be a security card for members to kind of tap in and let themselves uh, into the establishment. Um, along with this application was Anytime Fitness Security Compliance Program, which was uh, also routed to other various departments, including the police department. Um, within briefly over the security program, it had details such as um, it's going to provide panic buttons for emergencies. Uh, it will have a camera with 24-hour a day uh, recordings with backlogs of 30 days minimum. Um, that's just a quick overview, but this was the overall police department didn't have major concerns in regards to this operation. Um, moving on, uh, the proposal will not conflict with adjacent uses or impede the normal development of the surrounding property. Um, the applicant proposes to keep all gym activities entirely within the building and once again will not propose any changes to the existing building or, or the property. Um, Adequate uh, public and private facilities were provided. Uh, the zoning code, uh, as far as the change of use in parking spaces, it allows for a change of use for under uh, 5,000 square feet in the DSP. Um, and both a gym and a retail use, which the previous use or the current use right now is, um, it allows for them be, to be interchanged without additional parking. So therefore, the, the site and the proposed use will have adequate parking. Um, since there's no exterior modifications or um, any modifications to the lot, um, additional landscaping or any other uh, facilities will not be required to meet current standards. So uh, overall, the applicant's request to establish a gym is supportable based on the facts surrounding this application and findings. Um, this concludes staff's recommendation. All right. Thank you, Mr. Joe. Uh, now I'll briefly go over um, comments that we received from other city departments. Uh, building and safety just had standard comments. <clears throat> GWP water and electric. Uh, standard comments. Integrated waste, standard comments. Nothing from neighborhood services. From the police department, uh, ensure the staff has the ability to monitor or supervise activities inside the facility, parking area, and property while the business is open for members or customers. Second, uh, Suggested condition uh, signs indicating no loitering or trespassing uh, should be posted and clearly visible. Uh, third, the staff should not allow patrons or other others to loiter in the parking lot or property in an effort to prevent loitering or a nuisance. And then finally, the facility shall not be used as a place for lodging, food, or alcohol service or any type of illicit activity. <clears throat> Um, okay, those are the comments from other agencies. Uh, why don't I uh, open the public hearing and uh, call the applicant, uh, Alex Wu, to give a presentation. Good morning, Mr. Kiesel. Uh, as stated by uh, Mr. Joe in the staff report, uh, this is to establish a new gym located at 300 East Colorado Street. Um, anytime Fitness. Uh, anytime Fitness is very unique in the sense that you have uh, members that have access to the state-of-the-art machines and apparatus 24 hours a day, seven days a week throughout the year. Um, we felt that this will be a, a good use for the city of Glendale and uh, the, the residents and the potential members that we will have because of the location of all the uh, many residential uses uh, in the immediate area and the close proximity to the downtown area. Um, uh, I think that all the conditions that were stipulated by uh, Mr. Joe uh, are reasonable and acceptable by the applicant uh, and the operators. And um, I think that more or less concludes 
my presentation. If you have any further questions um, at this time that I may be able to answer or any. Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, does anybody else want to speak on the project? No, sir. No. All right. Um, okay. How does the gym operate when there aren't any employees? I'm so, assuming it operates very similar to a standard gym when there are employees from from 9 to 3.30 or 9 to 6.30 or whenever the, the, the hours are. Correct. So, so what happens if I come in at 8 o'clock at night? So when you come during the hours that it's not staffed, mm -hmm. then you will be able to enter the premises with a fob. You have a key fob. So basically you will need to... Uh, gain entrance to the location through the key fob. Like and the front door. Correct. The so front that, door won't open. It will not open. Okay. And what it does is it logs in as to whose key fob that's registered to. So for instance, if it was for me, it would say member one, two, three, four, Alex Wu. And it will clock in, uh, the, it will stamp as the time of entry. Okay. And then we have surveillance cameras throughout the premises. So we'll be able to know exactly what they're doing as far as what, um, what type of activities they're doing. Uh, and then basically that will um, be tracked. And then, and then they will, once they, Upon leaving, then we'll know that they have left as well. And then they have because uh, they've got to swipe their card to leave, or just well, I mean, there's a uh, camera, so we'll camera, know. Okay. Correct. Um, and then so the other concerns. So what we did was when we submitted the security plan, it basically spells out exactly uh, what type of security system they have in place. It's really state of the art, um, and we'll go ahead and make sure that you don't have any. Uh, let's say uh, I'm only one member, and if I want to bring a friend it will go ahead and be able to track that there's a second body that had entered with only one key fob. So then it will alert uh, the people to say that there was another entry made uh, with only one key fob. So there's a um, lot of current uses that um, or surveillance security mechanisms that will alert and be able to properly monitor all the activities to ensure that the patrons or the members that are using the facility when it's during the non-staffed hours will be safe as if there were someone manning the hours. Um, and like I said, there is existing uh, in the immediate area, there's currently one right up the street on La Cunada. That's been in existence, I want to say, for a good seven, eight years. And they have a really good track record. And in any time, Jim? Yes, sir. It's the same, oh. it's the same brand, okay. Anytime Fitness. Okay. So it's located in the, in the former, the sports chalet, uh, sports, uh, the, the community uh, village. So oh, in La Cunada. Yes, sir. That, okay. So it's right next that to where um, there's an AT&T store, yeah. and there's a couple of restaurants there. So, and that's been basically the, mo the mode of operation for, for all the Anytime Fitness, which is currently a nationwide brand. So um, this will allow the members to be lo um, belonging to this one in Glendale. And if they're out, out of state at another location in New York, perhaps, mm -hmm. they'll be able to use that as well. So this is a, a nationwide brand. And they're just coming into Glendale because there's already existing operations in La Cunada. I believe there's one in Monrovia. So that they thought this would be an ideal location. So what happens if I'm a member and I come at 9 o'clock at night when there aren't any employees mm -hmm. and I bring a friend who's not a member and I just we, I swipe and we both go in together? What, what happens then? Let me Can I have one of the operators? Yeah, 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 yeah. I just need you in the, on the mic, yeah, and then fill the out fill out a card when you're done. Uh, my name is Steve Lee. I'm the um, one of the owner operators. Um, so we have different uh, security protocols. So what happens is an alert will go off. Um, it's called tailgating. So um, <laughs> at that moment, one uh, there's three owners. All of us will receive the alert and we'll monitor the gym and. Uh, I live close. Our manager that we're going to hire is going to be uh, local as well, so we can figure out what's going on and get to the bottom of it. Um, in other gyms, again, it's, it's not only nationwide, it's global. Um, you, people might try to do that, but it's establishing a culture and cracking down on it um, from the beginning and uh, letting our members know right from the very beginning that that's not an acceptable practice. It's for everybody's safety. Mm -hmm. um, so when we do uh, practice that kind of um, um, that that culture uh, really works well to um, to limit that kind of activity. Okay. Um, you mentioned um, there are other locations, La Cunada, Monrovia. Are there any other ones in the area? El Segundo. Okay. Is opening. Um, Duarte. Um, Arcadia is uh, is opening soon. Okay. Where else? Long Beach. It's it's it. Uh, globally, it's the number one uh, franchise gym. 
So, so they're all over. Do you know of any problems that have occurred in Monrovia or, or La Cunada because of this kind of more unique operation? No, we do not. They've anytime fitness has never had any issues with security or anything else. Um, not more so than any other business. Okay. Yeah. Or gym. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, have you, have you, have you looked at the, um, conditions that yes. were, and do you have any issues with them? Any? No, I think they're, uh, reasonable. Okay. Cause I did have one question regarding, I think it was condition 11. And you may have kind of already answered that, um, but condition, proposed condition 11 uh, states uh, that the facility shall not be used as a place of, for lodging, food, or alcohol service, or any type of illicit activity. So if there aren't any employees at 2 o'clock in the morning and something like this occurs, I mean, how are you going to prevent it from occurring in the first place? If it does occur, how, how are you going to address it? Um, so basically, have, how can you abide by that condition? Well, we do have um, complete surveillance, and uh, we do, you know, we will monitor and audit it from time to time. Um, we'll have... What, what particular, what specific... May, yeah. Um, well, okay. I, I mean, I can g I can give you an example. The gym that I go to, not in not in Glendale. When I've gone early, early in the morning, there have been a couple times where I've noticed clearly homeless people have slept there overnight in the gym, and this is a gym that has employees all night. It's a twenty four hour gym, so. Um, it would seem, I mean, difficult to monitor and prevent and to make sure, um, or more difficult to monitor, prevent, and make sure that the facility is safely run um, w without it having employees. So that's sort of sure. where I'm getting. Uh, Mr. Kiesel, mm -hmm. um with all due respect, sir, I think that that, with the system that we have implemented here would actually be safer because, like I said, you will not be able to gain entries to the premises if you don't have access to the key fob. And the only way you get that is if you're a member. And like, I said, like Mr. Lee had further, there's a tailgating. So it's there have more mechanism of security than you would if you just had an employee that didn't want to have confrontation with that homeless person mm -hmm. that just maybe wasn't paying attention. This, this system that we have in place would actually curtail, if not prevent any of that type of activity happening. And furthermore, um, we will not have any lounge chairs. We will not have any sofas. We will not have anything where they could just kind of loiter and uh, lodge. Um, we will not have any, um, any refrigeration on site so they could bring any beverages or alcohol of that sort. Um, and as far as the illicit activities, uh, like I said, we will have uh, staff on site and we will also have surveillance throughout the premises. And if we observe any listed activities, uh, we will be d directly be in contact with the local authority to go ahead and make sure that we are, uh, we stop that. And so I feel that with the system in place, it actually uh, will be a lot conducive to making sure that we don't have any issues, the safety issues that you had raised. Uh, so um, I think that condition 11, as it stated, we don't have any concerns of being in compliance with that. Um, I think that what we have already in place and what we've uh, been able to uh, illustrate through the uh, security model that we have for the company will will more than suffice to be able to meet that. All right. Um, qu question for you then. So this is this is the whole tenant space, correct? Yes, sir. Um, you've got emergency door here. Yes, sir. But this is this is the door that I the would enter yes, to sir, go in. The main entry. And this is where the fob is. So yes, I, sir. I can't even get into. Correct. Unless I have. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, <coughs> is there anybody else that wants to speak? I don't. I don't have any other questions. No, sir. Okay. Um, 
Sure. Okay. Just just want to finish off by saying, you know, um, like uh, fitness is very important, as we all know. Uh, it's a big problem, um, you know, in this entire country, and Glendale is no exception. So we think by pro providing this gym, it'll be a great um, community service. So our goal in coming in and um, and doing this is to uh, run a really good business and to serve the community and helping everybody uh, to meet their uh, fitness goals provides a convenient stop. Most people who work out there uh, spend about 45 minutes to one hour um, in there. And this is very different from the big box gyms. A lot of people are intimidated by the big box gyms. Um, this is a, a smaller setting for the people to come in. We're gonna have um, personal trainers um, to help people as well to meet their goals. So that's the whole uh, purpose of this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So I'd like to say in closing, I'd like to thank Mr. Joe for all his time and effort on <coughs> this project. Very professional. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Uh, I'm going to close this public hearing and um, take the case under submission. Uh, what I want to do now is take uh, like a five-minute break.
Okay, um, we're back. I want to reopen the public hearing. Um, if the applicants could come up, and um, I think they have a, a request. Uh, so we like to uh, next week. Oh, I have two questions. I really need to speak to you. The first question is. CMTC. Uh, my every employee, they have all certificate of uh, the uh, CMTC, the license. This is okay. This uh, under the paper saying they got uh, I hired is uh, eighteen employee. It, this is not a true story. As everyday working people, only two to four people. Okay, my employees, some they work in maybe working one week, or some of the people one month, or they are valuable. They don't have a regular, you know, everyday working there. Uh, absolutely not. I don't. I never had any people, eighteen people working my place. Okay. 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 I'm. I'm going to stop you because I think you wanted to request something, and either we need to proceed today or we need to. Okay. He said, "Okay." He said, "I just want to ask you to ask him." Okay. You want to do today's presentation or next week's presentation? Okay, I would like it to in the next week, you know, the hearing. Okay. But uh, can I uh, speak to right now? Let you know that. No. no. <laughs> if you want to continue to the uh, the public hearing next week, I want to stop it now, and uh, then you can say whatever you want to say next week. 他说：“呃，现在来讲，我要必须要让你停止。你要下个礼拜说，那么下个礼拜再让你继续说。”你现在是问我个人意见吗？你个人意见自己都还没清楚，你就来打这场仗，这是错误的。OK。We need to read the paper. Sorry. Okay. Right, right. So you'd like to continue to next week? Yes. Okay. So I'll grant that request. Yeah. Um, and so we'll see、uh, everybody next week. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. That include that concludes the、um, planning hearing after hearing for May twenty fourth. Um, two thousand seven, thank or two thousand seventeen. Thank you. All right. All right. Okay. Thanks.